Mike Logue, the public hearing. <coughs> Open public hearing to hear comments and objections regarding the local law, amending local law number two of 2019 to extend the moratorium on the development and construction of wind energy conversion system and meteorological towers in the town. Is there any written? We received written comment from the CCR. Hi, it's Charlie Sickman. I'm from Windsor, New York. <laughs> Since it began, I've, I've swayed both ways. I've not tried to go either or, and I've looked at all the <coughs> positives and negatives that's gone on here. And so far, I think it's all positive, you know. You, you, it's so, got, sir, I just, I just want to interrupt you for a second. This is a public hearing on the extension of the moratorium. Yep. So your comments have to be confined to just that. It's Correct. Public comment later on will be an opportunity to, to kind of give a more wide-ranging view of things, if you'd like. Yep. Correct. We shouldn't be extending this moratorium any further. We should be straightforward going for the... Pro energy here. This $29 million we're going to miss out on. That's a fact. Wasting our time. Most of these people here ain't even from around here. I am. I've had enough of it. I've got a lot of land around here. Most of my family, as you know, do eat. We have all had this land, and all this land is, has been ours for many years. And now we got plenty of people from New York City. We got people coming from down in Monticello coming up here to argue this moratorium. This it, shouldn't be going on any longer. Pass this. I have nothing planned, so whatever comes out of my mouth just comes out. Um, on the moratorium, I would ask you definitely to approve it, to sit down and really review and go over very well all of the um, changes and the that they've made, our um, planning board. They've spent a lot of time doing that. They represent us. They are What they are doing is to protect us, the people in the town of Sanford. And basically that is your job too. Um, I respect the fact, uh, you know, with Calpine, but as far as the moratorium goes, let's, let's approve it. Let you guys sit down, spend the time that you need, go over all of those things because everything that was written in there is to protect right. us. They will be gone after this is all over. We'll never see them again, but all of us will be here. And, and quite frankly, you are here to protect us, our health, our safety, and our livelihood. So thank you. I'm not even going to 
come to try and get to the mic. I'm here over here. I was not in favor of the first moratorium. I'm not in favor for extending that for another three months. I'm not in favor for extending it for another three days. Exactly. We got enough information. Let's vote on it. Exactly. Let's do this. I think I've never been so angry or distraught about something that's going to um, affect all of our lives for the, for our, mine is getting pretty short, but some of these people, like my children, for the next 30 years, these things are going to be standing up on the mountain. You're not going to get rid of them. And this thing is so complex that we need more time. It's terribly complex. It's, it's like the state's against us, the federal government's against us, and I don't want one of you against us. I've paid taxes here for 60 or 70 years, thousands and thousands of dollars, supporting the town board, supporting the school districts, and that should count for something. And it's been a struggle, and this is the worst struggle I've ever seen. I've been in the hospital a couple times. I know my sister-in-law, probably if it hadn't had happened, she probably would still be here. And it's, there's a human toll on it that goes beyond description. I got one thing from... Uh, I want you to take a look at it. You can go online and look at it. It's from the Empire Center, and it's called Green Overloads. It goes to show you how much the, the Public Service Commission's against this. And I even had my own personal contact with the, the energy systems. They fraudulently charged me $1,500 over three years. So these geysers, the worst money grubbing, there's nothing green about what, what we're talking about here. When they talk about green energy and renewable, these things are renewable, they're not reliable. You have to have backup continuously. I've studied them thoroughly. I've looked at other, other um, site-based committees. I've watched them on the internet for two or three hours, and they all have the same argument. But then Judge Seen, Milady, he comes and they rule against most of them. I wish you'd please look at this and go online. I don't know whether I'm out of order or what, but... You're fine. We'll just hand it down to the clerk. What? We'll hand it down to the clerk for you. I didn't hear you. Okay. We'll hand it down to the clerk so she can put it in the record. We're going to keep it and look at it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't understand lawyer terms. I, I, I got you, you, you know that. You know, you know I still like you, though. We love you. And uh, it's, it's like we have professionals with trucks loads of money coming in on us. It's like a war. It's like an invasion. It's an invasion of our homes, our privacy, even our, our, our clear thinking. I mean, I've spent sleepless nights trying to figure out what to do, what's the best thing to do. I don't have any answers, but the best thing you can do is give us more time. Time is what we need. And if these things go in, time isn't what we got because these leases go on for 30 years. These people that sign these leases don't even understand what they're signing. I wouldn't if somebody come to me and drop, I don't know how much money in front of me. It would be a draw that it'd be hard to resist. And these guys have, I watched the, watched the hearings down here. They were the biggest scam I could believe. But nothing is as big a scam as these things are. If you read about them and study about them and, you, and learn about them and even look at that green overload, it come from Pataki on to uh, Governor Como. He, he 
proposed a 50-30 rule, 50% uh, renewable, 30% fossil fuel. But the fact is, for every, every uh, windmill you put up, you got to have some kind of fossil fuel to back it up. About 30 seconds, sir. I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I'm going to take as long as I want because... I got to cut you off after five minutes, you know that. You've been coming here for months. I know, but... <laughs> there you go. It's okay. It's, it's, it's okay. It's, okay. Okay. it's okay. such a disturbing thing to me Good job, that, that you guys are dropping this on us. I had to find it out myself. I had to go on the internet to find out what's going on. Nobody even sent me a letter, but they can send me a letter for a $20 bill for a dog license. I mean, it's just ridiculous how things go on. Thank you. My family's had property in uh, the town of Windsor and Sanford for 61 years. We've managed it as a farm, both fields and forest. Um, we're part of a, continu a contiguous uh, stretch of um, intact land that is probably over 10 to 12,000 acres that adjoins, or will adjoin if this goes through, uh, the wind farm. Um, my concern as an engineer, I graduated from SUNY Maritime with a degree in mechanical engineering specifically marine engineering, which meant I spent 40 years of my career in power plants. Um, and I spent my time in large power plants. And I've seen large equipment fail because it's reached the boundaries of sound engineering design. For example, in New York City sits Big Alice, made by Alice Chalmers, the tractor company. That's a thousand megawatt machine. Um, and, um, and I worked on that in the 70s. Um, it stretched the engineering boundaries. They've always had trouble operating that machine and keeping it going. My concern is that these machines, even though they're windmills, are at the leading edge and have not been proven. They've actually been designed to be put at sea, where I've spent a lot of time at sea as a marine engineer. And, um, and, and at sea, they have more uniform wind flow. Um, I was up on our mountaintop today, and we had anything but uniform wind flow. When that happens to a turbine of that size, blades are stretched, stretched um, um, flexed, so were the gears, so were the transformers. Original windmill transformers were used basic design. And they failed in the beginning because they had cyclic stretch, stretch, um, uh, cycles um, that caused the, uh, the internals to flex and fail. Sir, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, but uh, if, if you could confine your comments now to just the moratorium extension. Okay. Okay. And then, the moratorium, and, here, here's my point. Okay. There's a lot of significant engineering stuff I have not read and seen that is being reviewed. Um, and I think that needs to be looked at. I think these, these units will not last 20 years um, and they'll be fought with problems. They were designed for sea and now they're put on land. If they're going to put in windmills, put in smaller ones. And as my predecessor said, um, also keep in mind that for every windmill that goes up, a corresponding fossil fuel plant has to be sited. And I wouldn't be surprised in the next 10 years of Calpine's applying for uh, a gas plant in this area. I have a 500 megawatt gas plant where I live, uh, owned by Calpine. And, um, and they'd love to have one here with it because it's sitting on shale. So from a moratorium standpoint, I think there's some other things that I have not seen that need to be investigated. Um, um, as we go further because of the size of these machines. The other thing that some people may not know, the number one generator of electricity using natural gas in North America is Calpine. Uh, we don't hear that type of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so from the you know, standpoint of um, the integrity of machines, the size, if they have to happen, they have to happen, but I'm, I'm concerned as an engineer about the size of these units. Um, and then the, probably the last item is, um, the ratings that they, um, they mentioned, I think it's five megawatts a unit times 33, that's 165 megawatts, something like that. Or even gossip. Well, whatever no, no, so my point is, if you look online, then maybe look I'll this, look all that. Stop it, please. Oh. Let the speaker speak. I let you speak, let me speak. Um, um, the average um, operating capacity of a windmill across the country is less than 20%. 
So if they say it's going to, they're going to um, power 20,000 homes, if you have only 20% capacity, you'll only be powering 4,000 homes. Um, and that's simple math. And that remaining um, energy has to be made somewhere else. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how far you guys are looking, but I think you may need another three months to look a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Donahue, retired professor of history, Windsor, New Jersey. I want to say New Jersey, New York. <laughs> um, I have one question. Like, I guess it was October 6th, the planning board submitted their <coughs> recommended revisions in the wind turbine ordinance. But as of this day, correct me if I'm wrong, no notice about a hearing for this ordinance has been placed in the paper. Now, what's going on there? Are we trying to run out the clock for Calpine or what? I'm a little mystified as to why uh, nothing has been, no action has been taken at this point. It's over a month later. So there has to be, because there's been, there will be substantive changes to the original local law that was proposed, the local law needs to be reintroduced. And uh, so, uh, <clears throat> The plan, the plan is currently to, as, as long as it's the will of the town board to do so, reintroduce that local law to, to later on this evening, and then, uh, then a public hearing will subsequently be held uh, within, uh, within the 30-day period that we're required to wait in order for the county to comment on the law. Do you have any statutory underpinning for having this law reintroduced? It would seem that everybody had time to ponder it. It's been over a month. Because, the, because when the, the original local law was introduced back in May of 2019. It was referred to the planning board. The planning board made several recommendations for substantive changes. So when the town board decides what they want to do with those recommendations later on this evening, that it will be a substantively different local law than it was before. So we can't just move forward with a public hearing because we have to reintroduce the local law with the new substantive changes and then go through all the proper waiting and notice periods in order for a public hearing to be held. Okay, so when's the public hearing going to take place? The public hearing will take place at the December meeting. December meeting. And Calpine wants shovels on the ground when? I have no idea. Uh, I think it's pretty close. I don't like it being cut this close, and I think a lot of people would agree with me. Uh, it seems like, again, we're just running out the clock, and it kind of like, I don't want to sound derogatory, but it kind of like doesn't smell right. Okay, thank you. Jim Rose, uh, I live at Deer Lake for 28 years. Um, you all, as members of the town board, have an obligation to protect the health and safety and welfare of the community. The Calpine project has threatened to ruin the properties of many of the residents of the town. The vast majority of the residents have voiced their objection to this project verbally and through petitions. It's up to the town board to listen to the consensus feeling of the community that this project is harmful and not wanted here. The planning board has put long hours and deliberation to formulating their recommendations to the local law. We call on you to pass this law based on your comments as it was written. Right. These changes are, that's another matter. Touch it yourself. Pass it immediately. Call a special meeting if that's necessary. Make a public notice, notice and pass this into law as soon as possible. Any delay will be seen as a stalling of responsibility on the town board's part. We care about our community and want to save it. Please help us to protect this town from being ruined by this, pro by this project. Pass the law as written. Thank you. Anybody else? Any more comments is even related to the moratorium extension specifically? Step up to the microphone and go right ahead. Very quick. I've been a resident of Deer Lake for 43 years. We pay taxes for 43 years. The town council, I even 
I can't even remember when somebody said Deer Lake at the town council. But every time they raise our taxes and they reassess us and they put more regulations, they say we're a private community. That's not, that's not fair. Ma'am, is this there any comments about, there any comments about the moratorium extension or no? Speak slower, sir. Are your comments in regard to the moratorium extension that we're having the public hearing for? I know what you're saying. I'm just saying to my neighbors and my, my close residents, if you were in my shoes, how would you feel about practically losing everything that you saved for? And my husband, a veteran, that his uh, mustering out pay was for the down payment on our cottage. I'm going to be 90, 89 years old this coming year. I expected to spend the rest of my days there. And you're all going to reach there, maybe. And we all got to face that last day. And it's going to be your turn as well as mine. I can look the Almighty in the face and say I did a good job. You will all pay the piper. Thank you. So, please let me ask one more time, ladies and gentlemen. This is a public hearing about the local law to extend moratorium. If you if you have comments pertinent to that, please make them. And if you have other comments that are more wide ranging, we'll have public comment generally later on this evening. And that's an opportunity for people to share their perspectives on whatever they have on their mind. Okay. So uh, if anybody has any more comments specifically related to the local law and the moratorium, um, please come up to the microphone and, uh, and share your comments. Thank you. I don't need the microphone. Um, my name is Frank Chamberlain. I've lived on Farnham Road for 25 years since 1992. Um, specifically to the moratorium, all I'm going to say is being in construction for a long time, it's just another stall tactic, and uh, you should just vote on it and um, think about how much good it would do for for the people, the jobs, and, and everything else, instead of keep stalling it. Hi, my name is Dot Braun, and I am a Town of Sanford resident. Please, yes, pass the three-month moratorium extension. misinformation on this and I think that some people might agree with this disagree on this point on my side of the issue but I think that you should be able to say that you knew everything about the project before you vote so personally I would extend the moratorium before we know absolutely everything My name is Debbie Cairns. I live at Deer Lake. My husband and I, 35 years, year-round, members of the Methodist Church. Please extend the moratorium. This is so important. Um, let's take the time. Um, we don't want to be guinea pigs here. We want to help the state do the right thing. I think that it's very, very important that we are thoughtful with this. I mean, Joni Mitchell said they paved paradise and they put up a parking lot. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. We know what we have. There is not a more diverse or beautiful part of Broome County than the town of Sanford. It's up to us to protect it. Please take your time. Patricia Yoder. Ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry. We can't just have people just like jumping up randomly, especially oh, when we get okay, to public comment later on this evening. If you'd like to speak, please come up to the microphone. I understand that there's a lot of people here tonight. Well, the reason why I did that is... I, I know, I know. But I'm, 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 try, I'm, trying to keep, I'm trying to keep this thing as orderly as possible tonight because we have a lot of people here and a lot of people want to speak. Please come up to the microphone. We'll wait for you. It's no problem. It's no problem. We're not in a rush. 
take that down. Just inconvenience anybody the way you know how. There you go. Nice going, Nick. <laughs> Hi, I'm Thank Patricia Yoda, one Hello. person, big mouth. <laughs> you couldn't hear me there? You want me to come here? Here I am. I don't think you have enough information to vote on this moratorium. I think you need to extend it. If you want our opinion, that's mine. Tech man here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Wiley from the Windsor Partnership. Okay, we've been going on record before in supporting this project. We look at the bigger picture and what's going to do the most good for the most people over the longest period of time. And with our climate change, which is pretty evident outside right now, it's down to 17 or 16, and we're only in the beginning of November here. Um, we really would like to see something done in our area to help mitigate the changes. Alternative power seems to really be the thing. And whether it comes in the form of geothermal or solar or wind, and of course we're approaching wind on this one, we'd like to support that certainly. So if the moratorium is to continue at this point until we've got more information in, uh, that's okay by us. But we support the project and uh, certainly hope that it will go forward. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Ben Wisniewski. I'm an attorney in Rochester, New York. Uh, my firm, the Zoglin Group, represents the Broome County Concerned Residents, many of whom are in attendance tonight. Um, earlier this week, I sent you a letter uh, talking about BCCR's position on this moratorium. I'd like to thank the town attorney for quickly turning that around and getting it to you for your review. Um, I'm going to read a little bit from that letter now for everybody's benefit. Um, but before I do that, I'd like to respond briefly to some of the comments tonight that are expressing a need uh, for quick action on the real issue here, which is amending the 2017 uh, local wind law. Um, BCCR actually agrees that it is important to act as quickly as possible and as quickly as permitted by the law. Um, this is critical because if you want the siting board to honor your local law, you need to have your local law amended before the siting board acts. There's two ways to ensure that. One, move as quickly as possible on that local wind law but two, extend your moratorium because it's BCCR's position that the setting board should not act while the moratorium is in place. So with that said, I'm gonna read a little bit from the letter. BCCR believes it is imperative that the town extend the moratorium to ensure the new and improved wind energy zoning law will be binding on the pending Bluestone Wind Project. If the town fails to extend the moratorium, it is likely that Bluestone will not need to comply with the amended substantive standards of your new law. Out of an abundance of caution, to reserve your right to advocate for application of your new law, it is essential for the town board to extend the moratorium. <coughs> now, as probably all of you already know, there's a state law, Article 10 of the Public Service Law, which preempts some local laws, but it doesn't preempt all local laws. And specifically with regard to large projects like Bluestone Wind, the default under Article 10 is that your substantive local laws need to be applied by the siting board. That begs the question, what's a substantive local law? Well, it means <coughs> things like setbacks, height of structures, coverage of lots. Those standards you put in your law need to be applied by the siting board <coughs> by default. But there's other substantive local laws too. One type of substantive local law might be something that limits where you can build the project. For example, you could pass a law that says uh, wind turbines can only be built in an industrial district if you have one, or it can only be built in a wind overlay district if you built a law that could create something like that. But more importantly, it would also be a substantive law if you were to pass a moratorium that effectively prohibits construction or development of wind energy in all portions of the town before a temporary portion of time. So because BCCR <laughs> believes that the moratorium is a substantive law, BCCR also believes that the siting board is bound to comply with your moratorium. That's why it's essential for you to extend your moratorium. If you do it and the siting board waits to act, 
by the time they do act, your new law will be in place, and whatever new substantive standards you come up with, with the advice of your planning board and everybody in this room, the siting board will have to apply those new standards. And that's all I have. Thank you. Good evening. I'm uh, Bill Maines. <clears throat> live at uh, 517 Aquatic Lake Road. I've lived there all my life as uh, my parents did. So I uh, love Aquaga Lake and I think it's one of the nicest places on the planet. I'm here to uh, <clears throat> respectfully request that, that you guys uh, enact the continued moratorium and swiftly move forward with a new local law. The planning board did a fabulous job putting it together. Um, to me, there doesn't need to be a lot of tweaking and changing, um, but it's very important that we get it done quickly, as, as the gentleman just said. I'd like to read uh, to you, <coughs> excuse me, I have a bit of a quote, um, a letter from the county commissioner in Tipton, Indiana, who was in charge of uh, adopting, developing and adopting local laws uh, having to do with uh, wind turbines. Hard lessons can be learned from Tipton County Wind Turbine Project. I recently read that Cross County was presented information about a possible wind farm project. When Tipton County went down this path, I as a county commissioner missed a few due diligence items. So this person is acknowledging the things that they missed in setting up their local law. So I think it might be meaningful. <clears throat> Setbacks. I did not take into account that the towers in Benton and White counties at 350 feet in height and a setback from non-participating landowners of 1,000 feet should not be the standard setbacks in other counties where turbine heights were going to be 500 feet and taller. The taller the tower, the greater the setback should be and it should always be from the property line, never from the residential structure, as that limits the property owner full use of their property. A local government should never use a non-participating <coughs> landowner's property as part of the setback because a person should be protected via a setback from all locations of their property. Since I have now experienced the noise and shadow flicker in the homes of non-participating landowners at distances of even 1,500 feet, I would recommend a one-half mile setback from the property line of any non-participating landowner. <clears throat> Zoning regulations governing adequate setbacks are in place because there's an obligation to ensure public health and safety. Because this economic development project covers such a large geographical area of your county and affects numerous citizens, you cannot treat it the same way as another project that is confined to a few acres that affects only very few people protection of neighboring property values, and enhancing the livability of your residents are the primary objectives of the zoning ordinance and are of paramount importance to the overall general welfare of your county. In this case, you have property owners affected by spinning skyscrapers, and their welfare should be prioritized over the deprivation of a few property owners' land use for financial gain. Property values. The property values of non-participating landowners <clears throat> within even a mile of the turbines will decrease. It may not show in the assessed value, but the stark reality is that the pool of people interested in living in a home close to the turbines is far less than those interested in homes far away from the turbines. Jobs. No one in our county was qualified for the few permanent jobs, and the 200 local jobs were given to union workers 50 miles away. Those jobs, of course, were temporary. Community partnership. In the first year, the company gave some sizable donations to various nonprofits and philanthropies, but after that, they were absent from the community. Other facts. We have 69 turbines. Investment was 175 million. With abatement, the company will pay 3.5 million over 10 years in property taxes and 7 million in the next 10. Our financial consultant conveyed that this would amount to a mere $25 per decrease 
in most property tax bills. You can see the towers in the daylight easily from eight miles away, and at night the red blinking lights are visible from 15 to 20 miles. The turbines affect nearly everyone in your county in some way, and it will most assuredly divide your community because the turbines are a constant reminder of con conflicting views. About 30 seconds, sir. We've had three blade <coughs> breaks and 69 turbines. Our ordinance of 1,000 foot setback was inadequate in protecting our non-participating citizens. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, shorten this. This is another minute. Um, our ordinance was extremely weak and our naivety was taken advantage of. I reach out to you for only one reason. I wish someone had done the same for me. Jane Harper, who is the county commissioner, and acknowledged that they made some serious mistakes. I have copies of this for the board that I'd like to uh, pass around if I could. If you could just pass it to the clerk, please. Okay, thank, thank you. you. that from your position it must seem like an impossible decision that you're being asked to uh, consider here but um, I, I do want to just observing some of the comments in the room it seems like there's two two trains of thought uh, one of which is to extend the moratorium and take whatever months it may need uh, to gather the adequate in, uh, information we need to make a, a solid decision about the next 30 years Right. The other side seems to want to rush something that can affect us for 30 years. So what's being called a stall tactic, maybe to ask for several months to extend the moratorium, to pass the bill needed to ensure that uh, you know, the, the process can't begin before we've done our research as a community, seems like a very small thing to ask in light of the amount of years that we're looking at these structures being a part of our community. So I ask that you extend the moratorium, continue down the path that we're on, and shortly, maybe you'll have the information you need to make the really difficult decision. Any more comments? All persons desire to be heard, having been heard, the public hearing is closed. I'd like to ask the town board to consider adopting local law number two of 2019 to extend the moratorium. Roll call vote. I always hurry that one. Need a motion. I'd like to make that motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion from the board? Any discussion? Okay. Now the roll call vote. Jimmy A. Decker? Aye. Edwin L. Denny Aye. Kenny West? Aye. Jay Vandemar? Aye. Alice Ray? Abstain. Is there an announcement what happened there? The, the, board, uh, the board voted to approve the extension of the moratorium until uh, March 1st, 2020, or until such time as they enact a local law to repeal the moratorium.
So at this point, we're going to move on to uh, discussion of the planning board's comments, uh, as uh, rather the planning board's recommendations, I should say, that they submitted to the town board, and uh, Mr. Mock presented to the town board last month. Uh, <clears throat> I don't really have much to say on this, guys. This is uh, up to you to discuss your views, share them with the public, and let everyone know what you'd like to do. Well, we made uh, some recommendations several months ago, put it to the planning board. Um, the planning board uh, worked very hard in their, uh, and did their due diligence at uh, going through the town law, revising it, giving us their recommendations. Um, I'll speak for myself as I went through the recommendations. I think there's a lot of very important factors in that in that local law. Um, to be honest with you, I didn't always see each and every one of them at the time. Um, but in looking at certain things, uh, a great majority of the aspects that the planning board has recommended, I'm in agreement with. Um, setbacks, very important. Um, in thinking about the height of the towers after long and due diligence and as much as some people don't think we might do our homework i do do my homework and i look at things and i realize that the the three time setback is uh is absolute is absolutely necessary they're very tall um the uh property lines to be honest with you, in the very beginning, I, I really wasn't in favor of those things. Um, but the more I talk to my other board members um, and we share our ideas, those are very important too. Now, now we talk about um, things in, in the law that, that I did not like or had other ideas myself. Um, we did make a, a recommendation um, on the... Uh, Bless you. On the noise, and uh, after seeing their recommendation and uh, looking at the uh, at the numbers that are out there with World Health Organization, things like that, I myself um, uh, liked our recommendation better, the 40 and the 45. Um, so that that was my thought process there. Um, the recommendations as far as uh, the Met Towers. Met Towers are not a windmill. We've had a Met Tower in the town for, well, close to three years now. Um, it's not as intrusive as a, as, as a wind, windmill. Or they're not even the same, same type of object. Um, so the setback there, um, I, I know, I believe the planning board talking with Kermie and whatnot is to try and get it all in line three times and whatnot, but with the cell tower numbers that we have, so the recommendation there going back one and a half, um, I, I'm, I'm all right with that because it's, it's not a wind tower. Um, one other thing that, that they put in their law, because all the measurements as far as uh, um, sound at the property line, um, Flicker at the property line. All of those things are very important in the law. Um, I think they're substantial to to the people that are that have been voicing their opinions here um, in the past several months. Um, those I didn't have any any problem with because it's the uh, non-participating people that that. Uh, I thought we needed to protect, which is, which is you. Um, now they didn't make a recommendation there. They had a stipulation there about on-site and whatnot. People that were in the part of the project. Um, my own personal s stance there was if they wanted to get involved, then they're involved and, and they're getting paid for their inconvenience. I'm here to protect the people that aren't part of that. <coughs> So 
so that's my thought process there of, of not going with that recommendation. But it's just those couple of things. Um, that was my seat. Um, I know the planning board worked very hard. I respect every one of their recommendations. And uh, this new law that we are looking at, and probably here in another month we will be voting on, um, if you compare that to the local law that we have right now, um, it's a day and night difference. <coughs> so I know there'll be objections to maybe some of our overrides, and I respect that. But overall, I think what I'm looking at, and if it gets passed, and I can only speak for myself, um, it will be a law that <clears throat> protects our citizens and and then we move on. That's where I sit. Thanks, Lance. Uh, <clears throat> I think Lance covered this pretty well. <coughs> Feeling very similar to mine. But, um, um, I want to thank the planning board. They spent a lot of time. They've done a lot of work. They did a lot of research. Uh, and they've done a good job. Um, for example, a setback, I think the setback was 1.25. At um, at the present time, like the uh, cell tower in our ordinance, it's 1.1. Uh, like Lance said, the uh, uh, Met Tower is completely different than the uh, Wind Tower. Or the wind. It, um, it's, so that is something that I think the board needs to look at. It, um, and the same with the, uh, the uh, noise. Uh, I also done an awful lot of studying. And the paperwork that uh, Jeremy gave to me, it, um, I went through pretty near everything as well as I could understand it. <coughs> it uh, covered Guilford, it covered Ireland, it covered Europe, and it, uh, most of it was uh, based on the WHO, it, uh, in New York Public Service Commission, Case 16-7F-0328, and basically the wind recommendations was exactly the way that mine is indicated. Um, and I think that... Uh, For sound, you mean? Yes. That, um, the, the board wants to protect the public just the same as, as the uh, planning board, and the planning board did a great <coughs> job, and we need some time to look at this and come up with what we think is not only protecting the public, but make sure it's reasonable. <clears throat> Any other comments? I'd just like to say, uh, I, don't, I don't think anybody here on the board took any of these decisions lightly. There's a lot of a, a lot of thought put in everything, a lot of communication. Um, we're just trying to put together the, the uh, strongest, most reasonable law to protect people. Something that uh, a judge isn't going to look at and say, uh, you know, this is uh, too harsh or too far one way or the other. So that's that's all I my only comment on. So, what, what's your what's your feeling on on what Dewey and Lance had to say about things that that some board members disagreed with? Well, I mean, I guess as any group of adults, there's not a hundred percent agreement on every every issue. But, uh, well, that's about it's about compromise, you know. Uh, just thinking about protecting the people and protecting the land and uh, any future development, that sort of thing. So. Okay. I'd like to say thanks to Carmen. You did a wonderful job with that, and I'm all about protecting the people in the community as well as families and children. And um, to sum it up, you did a good job, and I just want to 
just done right and done right for everybody. Okay. Any other discussion from you guys? Sage is yours. Okay. So what I have heard from Lance and Dewey and kind of more generally from uh, Kenny and Jay um, is first in regard to the planning board's recommendation to uh, set the setbacks for Met Tower specifically at, uh, at three X across the board. Um, and uh, there's other language the planning board added in there as well. Um, from what I'm hearing from you all, um, or uh, from most of you anyway, um, you're more comfortable and feel like there's more support um, from a legal standpoint for reducing that, well not reducing the setbacks, but rather returning to your own recommendations on the setbacks that you had originally proposed back in May. Am I correct or incorrect in, in coming to that conclusion? I, I think there was 1.25. Right, so, so the Met Tower setbacks that the town board originally recommended were 1.25 times the total height from all adjacent uh, off-site property lines, rights of way, easements, public ways, power lines, <coughs> gas wall, state lands. 1.25 times the total height from all permanent structures located on site. So that's where um, the Met Tower is located and also any people that have <coughs> setback agreements, uh, they become part of the site as well. And then 1,500 feet or two times the total height, whichever is greater, from all permanent structures that are located off site. That was your original recommendation to the planning board, whereas the planning board's recommendation was basically three X for everything across the board. Right. And I, I had heard you and Lance say in specific that the um, Met Towers are not the same thing as wind turbines. Right. And there's a, what, a different, what, a different set of considerations that you had in your mind? Yes. It, uh, <clears throat> it's closer to a cell tower. Okay. And um, in our regulation now, cell tower is 1.1, which, um, which that's something we that probably should look at in the future. Okay. Um, and we're looking at, at uh, 1.5, is that correct? What? Lance? Yeah. What? We're looking at one, the original, what we had read. The original I just read off, it's 1.25. Right. Except for from residences, churches, libraries, other places where people gather, it's 1,500 feet or 2x, the greater of those two things. That I was your original recommendation. <coughs> well, so, I think what we talked about was it end up being 1.5 more no, for the other. No, no. It's, 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 your, it's your original the recommendation, original recommendation. What, I, what I read off. And to the extent that, that there was a different number floating out there, it was not correct. That's, that would be what the original recommendation was, whereas the planning board... that's the last page, page, right? The yeah. second to last page, yeah. yes. Gotcha. Kenny or Jay, do you have specific thoughts on Met Tower setbacks? Well, I just feel that we're in a, a different class of what we're putting up as opposed to a wind turbine, so the... Uh, any of the risk factors are, are limited, so okay. <clears throat> okay. The original, the original language is good. Okay. All it right. It works. So then, for a Met Tower. So then, are, are we are we interested in, in a in a motion on this? Uh, do we have any further discussion on this topic, Jay? Anybody? <clears throat> All right. So we would need a motion to override the planning board's recommendations regarding Met Tower setbacks at section 1402.7 C1 of the local law and to revert back to the town board's original proposal for Met Tower setbacks and other related language in that section. We need a motion and a second on that language. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make the motion. Second. I'll second. Roll call for it. Two A. 
So we have a number of other things to discuss based on the conversation that I just got done listening to. Um, Lance, you had mentioned, uh, Lance and Dewey both had mentioned uh, the planning board's uh, noise recommendations of uh, 35 during the evening and 40 during the daytime. You had uh, mentioned a desire to return that back to the town board's original recommendation of 40 during the daytime and 45 in the evening. Is that what is that what I had heard from you guys? Yes, no? Yes. Because yes. a lot of what the planning board did give us were where those numbers were in the World Health Organization were um, greatly accepted. And uh, which numbers were greatly accepted? The forty and the forty five. Okay. And uh, and that was our original recommendation and uh, I, I'm good with our original recommendation. Other thoughts on that? I agree with that. Any discussion? Did you have a specific opinion, Dewey, on the uh, research that you reviewed from the planning board related to noise? Yeah, I, I went through uh, everything that, that uh, Permit gave to us. And, and I agree exactly with the plan. Okay. You know, I went all the way down to it. Okay. Uh, we are public service commission case in uh, Ireland and uh, Europe. And all the certain areas. And I don't know that was, uh, that was uh, pretty much what I agree with. So you're saying that the, the 40 and 45 has more support in the, in the evidence yeah. that you looked at? Okay. Kenny, Kenny and Jay, your perspectives? Yeah. I feel the same way. I think it's something that's got a lot of support. So we're not trying to kind of break through or something. Some of the levels here that are not heard of. Okay. Okay. So then, Kenny, 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 so uh, then, are we interested in a motion to uh, revert back to the town board's original uh, recommendations on those particular sets of noise limitations? Yes, no, maybe so? All right, so if, if we are, then we would need a motion to override the planning board's recommendations regarding noise limits at section 1402, excuse me, please. Section 1402.5A5A of 40 DBA LEQ 8 hour and revert back to the town board's original proposal of 45 DBA LEQ 8 hour in that section. And then we'll do the other one in just a second here. So we need a uh, motion in a second on that language. I'll make that motion. You're I'll second. <coughs> I'll second. Do we need Edward? Aye. Edward Elton, anyway. Aye. Kenny West. Aye. Jay Vandermark. Aye. Okay. And then the second, the second piece of it that we discussed, uh, we need another motion to override the planning board's recommendation regarding noise limits at section 1402.5 A5B of 35 dBA L night outside and revert back to the town board's original proposal. Of 40 DBA L night outside in that section. So motion in a second on that language. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Do we need Edward Elton anyway? Aye. Kenny West. Aye. 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 The, basically the last thing that I heard was um, the difference between uh, the uh, the last thing that I heard was the difference between uh, the term the, the use of the term off-site and the use of the term non-participating um, can you uh, can somebody explain just your understanding of the difference between those two terms and 
why you why you you indicated that you're favoring returning to the non-participating terminology. I think Lance, you kind of articulated it well when you the, were speaking. The, the non-participating person is the person who is not involved in the project. Um, the off-site um, is someone who is it, who is involved in the project, has a lease, getting money. Um, so I'm. I'm interested in making sure that the non-participating people are all in the language. They're all all <coughs> setbacks for noise at property line, non-participating, flicker at property line, non-participating, which is all in the language that the planning board um, put in. The only thing is, is the off-site people that are involved in the project, people that are getting money, um, them, uh, I didn't. Uh, I, I didn't feel the need that uh, that I have to uh, be involved in, in what their business is. I'm trying to protect the people that are outside the project. Any other thoughts on that particular concept? No, I, I agree with that. People that are good neighbors. Jay or Kenny? Thoughts on that? Yes, you don't have to. You don't have to have thoughts. I'm just asking you to do. Uh, okay. So that being that being the case, there are uh, a number of particular sections where this reference was made um, that pertain to what you're talking about specifically. There are also a couple of sections that uh, in my view do not pertain to what you're talking about specifically. So offsite is a term that is used uh, for when defining uh, setbacks and other things for non-commercial wind turbines and also for MET towers. And just as, as my explanation for the use of that term, the reason why those, that term is used in those two particular contexts are because in a non-commercial wind turbine situation, there is no participating and non-participating. The uh, person is erecting that turbine on their own property for their own electric usage at home, basically. And uh, so there's no leases, there's no good neighbor agreements, nothing like that. And so there's only off-site and on-site. So that terminology, based on what I've heard, doesn't pertain to what you're talking about specifically. Similarly for Matt Towers, there also really isn't a, a participating versus non-participating for MET towers, because having reviewed a couple of MET tower applications, um, what ends up happening is that the, the company will put in their MET tower application, and that may involve a lease for an individual property owner, but it will also involve setback agreements where adjacent landowners will give their consent if setbacks can't be met from one property line to the next, and those people, based on the definitions in this law, end up being lumped into on-site. So again, on-site, off-site are kind of how you define the relationship between types of property with MET towers. Slightly different concepts, but different, but the same similar thing as you would with uh, the non-commercial wind turbines. Now, the off-site versus the, the, the off-site, on-site versus participating, non-participating does come into play when we're talking about commercial wind turbines and the various studies that are done in relationship to commercial wind turbines and setback standards and noise standards and whatever have you um, that we've discussed in some detail already. Because as you all know, there is, there is a concept of participating and non-participating in the commercial context. In the commercial context, you have people that have leases, you have people that have good neighbor agreements. Those are all participating properties. Under our law, non-participating properties are properties where, no, where people have no agreement with the development company. And uh, Lance, I mean, to, I, I said a lot of words there, but the bottom line is, what I'm hearing from you anyway, is that those are the people that you're interested in protecting in the commercial win context, right? Yes? Correct. And, 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 and others agree with that, yes? Okay. So that's kind of a long explanation, but um, I've gone through and taken a look at the places where 
off-site applies, or where off-site is used in the context that you're, you're all speaking about here. And um, I can give you motion language now if you'd like to revert that language back to non-participating. And it goes a little something like this. Uh, motion to override the Planning Board's recommended use of the term off-site at sections 1402.4 M4, M6, M9, 1402.5 A4A, A4C, A5, and A6, and to replace that term with the Town Board's original use of the terms non-participating, on non-participating, or on non-participating proper properties as grammatically appropriate in those sections. So uh, that would require a motion in a second to accomplish what you've said basically and I've said in really complicated, unintelligible language. I'll make that motion. Second. Do you want to Second. Aye. Aye. So the uh, the the last one, if if that didn't confound you, this one certainly will. Um, this, this last motion is still the same thing as that, but there's one little subsection of language where the uh, planning board used um, the term permanent structures located on site or off site. And in order to accomplish the goal that you just stated, it would need to be changed back to permanent structures located on participating and non participating properties. So uh, just to make the distinction between on site, off site, and participating, non participating, like you've been talking about. So that motion language, which takes care of all of the rest of this and really is part of what we just did in motion number four, is motion to override the planning board's recommended reference to, quote, permanent structures located on-site or off-site, end quote, at section 1402.5A4B of the local law, and to replace that reference with the town board's original reference to, quote, permanent structures located on participating and non-participating properties in that section. So we need a motion in a second on that, just to finish that concept <coughs> off there. Entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Do we need Decker? Aye. Edward Albany Aye. Kenny West? Aye. Jamie and Marcus. So I think I heard Joanne say out there, what does that really mean? What does that really mean? Okay, I'm not gonna get any, I'm not, I'm not gonna any conversation with you about it, but I just I do want to try and explain it as best as I can. So off-site versus on-site, basically the, the, the planning board, and I don't want to put words in their mouth or or, uh, or give their rationale for them, but one of the things that they had concluded upon is that they were that they wanted to set commercial wind turbine setback standards, noise standards, shadow flicker standards, etc. From, uh, the, and make those applicable to all off-site properties. So off-site properties are any properties that don't have a wind turbine on it. So that would include properties in certain instances where people have where people have good neighbor agreements. So the town board, uh, the town board's position, which they just articulated, was that they're interested in this law protecting people that don't have a financial interest in the project, and that that is that is why that language was changed. <coughs> Because the town, as, as, they, as they've said already, the thought is that if you mitigate the inconvenience of having a wind turbine in your life by taking a monetary payment, that you've, you've already made your decision as to what you'd like to do. And, then, and so these, this language has been changed to protect people exclusively who do not have a financial relationship with the project. Does that make more sense? I tried my best. I tried my best. It's a it's a nuanced concept. I apologize. But in, in a not in a nutshell, I tried to explain it before, um, and I'll quickly try and so maybe the bottom line is, is the changes as far as that goes protects the people that have an agreement. That it doesn't protect those people. It protects the people that do not have agreements. You don't have an agreement with a wind company, you know, we're protecting you. You know what I'm saying? We're not interested in protecting somebody that has an agreement with a wind company. So, um, okay. 
I think that's as simply as it can be stated. All right. And, and I know some of you will may be frustrated, not absolutely sure exactly all that went on. But I think at the end of the day, like I said before, once this new law comes out, um, which will which will be shortly, so that you can get copies of it. We'll try and get it on our website as soon as possible. And, and you compare <coughs> that to what the old law was, the new law has a lot more teeth. Um, and the planning board went to, uh, did their due diligence in, rec in recommending those things. So that's all I got to say about that. So we're not, we're not getting it, no, not right now. In public comment, you can. Um, uh, so, I didn't hear any other objections as to any of the planning board's other recommendations. Are there any other objections to any of the planning board's additional recommendations that were made? I don't have it. No? Okay. So, I have some language here for uh, one last final motion. Uh, the town board has conducted its own research and has reviewed the research submitted by the planning board to the town board as a justification for its recommendations and finds that the remainder of the planning board's recommendations are rationally supported by the record of the proceedings surrounding proposed local law number two of the year 2019. And considering that uh, you all seem to agree with that sentiment, we need a motion to accept the remainder of the planning board's recommendations as written. So moved. I'll second. Do we need a decker? Aye. Edwin Elk, anyway? Aye. Penny Wist? Aye. Jamie Anderbar? Aye. Okay. So, just to, just to give folks a brief rundown as to, as to one of the planning board's recommendations stayed in, um, their setback language for commercial wind turbines and non commercial wind turbines stayed in. Uh, their their uh, language on infrasound protection stayed in. Their, uh, the, and these are just examples. There's more. You can uh, take a look at it in the website or foil it or whatever you need to do. Um, their, uh, de their decommissioning language, which was strengthened, stayed in. Uh, and there are a variety of other uh, important substantive standards that the planning board uh, recommended that the town board had not recommended that uh, have now <laughs> gone into and become a part of this local law. So aside from those just a few changes that uh, the town board just got done making, the planning board's recommendations have, have largely been accepted by the board. So uh, now uh, we have, uh, <coughs> the, the, that we're, the, as, as we've now gone through and made these overrides and accepted the remainder of the recommendations, now we're down to uh, making a motion and you have a resolution in front of you tonight uh, enact, uh, rather not enacting, rather, but uh, uh, introducing or reintroducing, I should say, proposed local law number two of the year 2019, which is uh, still entitled a local law amending local law number one of 2017 entitled renewable energy systems as revised. Um, and uh, we need a motion to introduce that local law and set it down for a public hearing in accordance with the written resolution that we have before you tonight. Yeah, I make a motion. Second. I'll second. You take it. take it. Do we Aye. 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 Okay. So that'll be set down for a public hearing uh, at the December town board meeting uh, after we receive, uh, well not after we receive, but we'll be putting it out for review by the county pursuant to the resolution and then when they come back we can act. Okay. That was, uh, that was a lot. Thank you all. I appreciate that. Thank you. Public comment. Okay, so for those of you remaining, I think that most of you are familiar with the rules of public comment, but just to go over them again one more time, uh, it was the same with the public hearing earlier on this evening. Uh, everybody has five minutes to speak, not more than five minutes. Every individual person gets one opportunity to speak. 
Uh, if you think that somebody's saying something particularly profound, you cannot donate your time uh, to that person to allow them to speak longer. It's five minutes, one person. That's what you get. Uh, when you're speaking, please stay at the microphone. Please address the town board. Please do not address the people in the audience. Uh, when you are not speaking, please don't speak. Don't shout over the person who's speaking. Uh, if the town board is trying to answer someone's question or share their perspective, please don't yell or shout or speak over them. Uh, and uh, if we can abide by these rules and uh, keep it clean on the language front, everything will be all, all right. If things get unruly or chaotic or anything like that, uh, public comment will end. If an individual person gets unruly or chaotic, abusive, vulgar, or whatever on the microphone, you'll be asked to sit down. If you don't, you'll be asked to leave. I think that everybody is well aware of uh, the rules of public comment, and I think that everybody generally does a really good job of abiding by them. So uh, without further ado, if you'd like to speak, please step up to the microphone. Gentlemen, good to see you this morning, this evening. Uh, Rich Cleary, 496 North Sanford Road. Been up here for 25 years. So I'd like to bring to your attention kind of the bigger picture. And today, in yesterday's New York Post, Cuomo's growing wind bulldog, the New York State Energy and Research Development, Cook got caught cooking your books. It's going to cost $1 billion for clean energy turbines off of Long Island, the most expensive type of turbines they can build. They realize it's going to cost $6 billion, probably more. They find, they're finding that the leading edge of these props pick up the dust in the, in the wind and they actually get degraded. They gotta go out there, they gotta shut them down, and they gotta repair them. Very expensive. In September of 916, the Saudi Arabia got bombed. I'm sure everybody's aware of that. Half of the oil production, they lost half. This country wasn't even a speed bump. We've become energy independent. Not one news report attributed that to wind or solar or anything else. The fossil fuels, natural gas has made this country energy independent. We export more energy than anybody else in the world. We've got the largest gas reserves than anybody else in the world. That contributes to the wealth of this country. Governor Perry, head of the Department of Energy was on TV last week. And he was saying they're building four plants in Pennsylvania. Natural gas plants, 24-7 clean energy. 600 jobs per plant. 600. And they're going to build four of them. How many are we getting? Six? It's never been about energy. Never. There was an article in the Post... Last week, I brought it up in a, in a letter to the editor. There's a company by the name of Net Power. You can Google it, you can look it up. Company out of Texas. They're actually producing energy, electricity, by reburning the carbon dioxide. The patent's supposed to go online in about a year, maybe sooner, I don't know. But they're actually producing electricity with clean gas, zero emissions. And the other gentleman alluded to earlier, I forget his name, uh, the engineer, and he was absolutely correct. These companies all cross invest. Coal is gas, gas is wind, wind is solar, oil is gas, oil is everything. They all invest in everything. And whichever way the wind blows, <laughs> or whichever way the politicians want, that's what they're gonna give them. Right. They know that we're on the cusp <coughs> of the technology of bringing clean technology affordable to, uh, and 24-7. These are, they're obsolete even before they're built. They know it, we know it. The damage that these structures do to our, our citizens' health, our property values, our environment is, is criminal. I'm glad you voted for the moratorium to extend it. I hope you look at all the facts. But the, the main fact is, it's not about energy. It's a huge boondoggle and a land grab. These guys are going to come in here. They're going to depress property values. People will be happy to get pennies on the dollar. They'll come in, they'll buy up the land, 
and they'll run that gas line right through, which is maybe what they want to do in the first place. These wind turbines don't work. They never did and never will. Hope you consider that. Thank you very much. that Mr. Diddy would uh, put forth that are going to be reversed from the planning board suggestions. When will that be published? Uh, you'll have a draft of what we introduced, uh, hopefully within the next 48 hours. If it's, not on the, if it's not on the website, the clerk will have copies and you can come and uh, request a copy. Will they be available at Town Hall, do you think? This is Town Hall. Yes, this Right, time. right, yeah. We so at, stop by right in the clerk's window, yes, absolutely. Call you, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, go ahead, please. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, my name is Adrian Miller. Uh, Allison's got this flyer. I handed it to her during the break. But this is a flyer on Pro for the turbines. Where did I get the information from? The antis. <laughs> we took an article that you had that my granddaughter was at deposit at the uh, Oktoberfest. The people at the table said, you can have our perspective, just sign our petition. Well, she got a copy of the perspective, went and looked at it, they took the top article off the perspective, off the article, didn't read the rest of it. My granddaughter did. Now I got this and I, I gave it to Allison to give to the board so that they can look at it. But uh, there was a Dr. Hoffmeyer. Philip Hoffmeyer had a talk about two weeks ago. You know, there wasn't anybody from the town of Sanford board at that meeting. Not a one. I'm giving you this information. What I want to know, is it going to do any good? <coughs> or have you already made up your mind which way you're going to vote? So December, let's have a vote either for the turbines or against it. I'm going to take a less angry tone. Okay, so I did go to the Oktoberfest. I got a sheet. I looked at the cited sources, and one was a citation of a Harvard study saying that wind mills aren't actually green. Well, I read the first sentence, and that's what it said, but then when you read further down, it's not quite so clear. They only did the study over a year. They didn't do it on actual wind turbines, and there were a lot of people who really disagreed. So the problem with this is there's a lot of different sides to it. And I read all of the arguments that they had, and most of them I could find a refutation for, but they also had things to support it, so it's a little complicated. But there are some things that I definitely think were missourced or misconstrued. Particularly one of the things that the group cares a lot about is the avian death that it causes. They cited a number that was national where over a year windmills can kill 400,000 birds. That sounds like a big number, but considering the population of birds, that is a 0.01% of the population of birds. And in regards to golden eagles and eagles, it only kills about 100 birds a year. So it won't actually affect our bird population that much. And also there are things that kill birds way more, like cars and cell phone towers and household cats. 
and we're not stopping to drive our cars, we're not tearing down our cell phone cow towers, and we're not throwing out our cats. <clears throat> Sorry. I think you're fine. And there's a lot of, I talked to someone at the booth who had problems with the appearance <coughs> of windmills. They think that it will make a beautiful place that we live in very ugly. I don't think that windmills are ugly, but that's personal opinion. What I do think is that aesthetics should not be considered at all. Because there are a lot of things that create progress that aren't pretty, like power lines and sewage systems. And it will make our world pretty to end the effects of climate change and pollution and whether or not you believe in climate change. I'm not going to get into it. But science says it is real. And also, ending the effects of climate change will help I mean, animals all over the world. And yeah, I'm sure I'm almost out of time, so I'll just stop. Good job. Others, the stage is yours. No, well, what took me so long? I have been talking a lot to uh, all these meetings, and I think uh, we have our lawyer laid out a lot of good points about the moratorium, which was the first comment section. I only want to say one thing about the birds in particular, because the Audubon Society, who is generally pro wind, because indeed, if you look at overall bird kill versus what they believe it does good for energy, they have said literally that. Our spot here is the worst location in all of New York to build this turbine project because of the migratory patterns and of the wintering e uh, eagles and uh, too much to go into. It's all online, but they are strongly against the project right here. They, the, the Green, the Broome County Green <coughs> Party, they have, can even speak anymore. The Green Party, Broome Tioga, also supports the BCCR that this is not a good space. Uh, for it and that this project is more destructive than, than uh, that it does good for the environment and they are also a green party so there's a lot of people that support the environment and we are, I consider myself one of them that you have to look at the total picture, you have to look from cradle to grave, you have to look <coughs> at construction and you have to look at um, what you're doing, what you're building and what you're going to get for output. We have never seen that full picture developed by Calpine but this is particularly about the birds this is not a spot for bird-wise, purely bird-wise. And uh, the next, uh, my next comment is that I really hope that um, we can uh, move forward with the law fast. Maybe there is a time uh, that we can can get the county planning board to um, to review it faster, and then maybe there is a way that we can uh, make those 30 days shorter, so that we can do a special hearing, and that we don't have to wait to the next planning board meeting in December to have that public hearing about the law because we are really um, in the time crunch that if we want the law to be considered. So I really am hoping that there is an option to do that if you would be open for it to have a special meeting rather than wait for a month. So hopefully talk about that. Thank you. Okay, I can't emphasize the importance enough to follow up on what Anna said of really expediting and fast-tracking the public hearing for this law. It wasn't 100% what we wanted. You didn't, you didn't give it 100% approval. I'm not going to grumble about that. What I want to see is action and have this wind, this wind ordinance approved quickly. Have a hearing. Put, put a notice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, so anyway, um, I'm like a little mirth. Sorry about that, folks. Um, I can't emphasize enough that we need to move on this very quickly. Um, otherwise, we're leaving a window open for Calpine to come in. They want to put a shovel. They want to put shovels in the ground by the end of the by the end of the year, December, and we should really shoot for a late November. Uh, hearing so we can all air our views and so we can get you guys to vote on it and get it get it approved as soon as possible this is very urgent for the welfare of the community 
this is something that we can't just lollygag on. I think we need to get the I need we need to get this uh, uh, law, even in its amended form, approved right away. There should be no further delays. Thank you very much, and I hope uh, I hope that you'll um, heed what I have to say. Thank you. Good evening, guys. Um, I know you're in a tough spot. I know that uh, there's a lot of pressure on you coming from both sides, and um, I, you know, I appreciate some of the comments today that we're trying to weigh the the, uh, the interests of the two sides, and that was that came clear in some of the discussion today. I just want to be clear about two points, and you know, other than that, I don't have anything else to say. One. We've looked at these setbacks that uh, were considered in the recommendation, and although you, may, you guys may think that they're reasonable, the three times setback from the property line effectively means we can build from zero to three turbines in the town of Sanford. And you know we can take a look. You know maybe a, a wind company down the down the line will come and propose smaller turbines, but even even at like 500 feet, five to 600 feet, 550, I think that you'll find that those setbacks are punitive given the shapes of the parcels in this area. You've got a lot of larger parcels, but they are, uh, you know, long and skinny, rectangular. They go up to the ridge line, And so the reality is when you apply a three-time setback on a property parcel shaped like that, you effectively mean that you can't build anything on those parcels. The other thing I wanted to point out is, you know, you guys uh, referenced um, uh, in this recommended law today here um, limits imposed at the property line for sound and for shadow flicker. And I, I would encourage you to think very carefully about how you're going to measure those limits, right? So when you apply when you apply an eight-hour limit for sound on a property line boundary, you're talking about a project that has dozens. I can't, I can't remember the exact number. It's probably 50 miles plus of boundary line. Much of that boundary line is on steep slopes. It goes through forests. Effectively, um, under you know, to, to to comply with the letter of the law, you'd be requiring the installation of sound monitors all over the place on, in areas that are pretty much in, inaccessible. So I think carefully, you know, going forward about how you, would, how you would seek to have the applicant measure compliance with those sound and shadow flicker requirements. And, you know, one, it's one thing for sound monitors that are installed. It's a piece of equipment. How would you, monitor, how would you monitor shadow flicker at a distant boundary on the side of a ridge line, right, with a 40% slope? How would you measure shadow flicker in the, in the middle of a dense forest at the back of a property line? Something to think about as you as you spend the next couple weeks thinking about what you recommended here today as we approach the uh, the hearing. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. On October eighth, the town planning board presented to you an updated wind ordinance with the recommendation that the town board pass it. The planning board has done the work that this town board should have done before moving down the path you now find yourself on with Calpine. You opened the door for Calpine, you welcomed them into our community. You endangered our environment, health, and safety. Now you must act immediately to protect us to the best of your ability by passing this revised wind ordinance as presented to you. The mere fact that a Calpine representative would stand up here and infer to you the town board, that the town planning board revised the proposed wind law specifically to prevent them from completing the project. It's just another example of the true character and type of company Calpine is, a company that would do and say anything to get their project done, no matter the facts or if they tell the truth. It is a disgrace to Calpine to have a representative stand up here and talk about the members of the town planning board in that manner, as every member of the town planning board treated this Calpine representative professionally and with respect. And the town planning board made it clear from the very beginning that the new law was to promote, encourage, and allow for green energy, and at the same time make sure to protect our health, safety, environment, and the community's economic future. I was at every meeting the town planning board had, and at every meeting the Calpine representative attended the town planning board gave him the same amount of time to speak and present information as every other member of the community received. In the very beginning, the town planning board made it very clear to all of us that although they had respected our opinions on where we stood on the, on the issue, the only thing they would 
consider was facts and to only give them facts. I am positive there were many of us that would have liked the revised wind law to have much stricter setbacks, stricter infrasound and noise regulations, stricter flicker restrictions and property value guarantees to protect us. Whenever we voiced our opinion, they listened, but stated we can only consider facts as they did with research, data, regulation, and laws. Although I do not believe the revised wind law does enough to protect our health and property values, I must respect the town planning boards. Recommendations as presented in the proposed revised wind law. As they were always sure to consider <coughs> only facts and make recommendations based upon documentation which supported those facts. It was very evident that the number of hours each member of the planning board put in to this proposed wind law, for which they received no compensation. And I am positive that every recommendation they have made to you can be supported with facts and documentation. It is obvious that Calpine is not happy with the new revised wind law proposed. Why else would they stand up and misrepresent how the town planning board developed and proposed the wind law? Calpine is just upset that obstacles have been put in their way. They know that this proposed law can be supported with facts. They just don't want it put in place. Now why not? Because Calpine doesn't care about us or our community, just their pocketbook. And the Calpine representative telling this town board to consider the time and money they spent on the project was out of line. You're here to protect us. Was that to be considered a threat? Perhaps Calpine will sue our town. Perhaps not. Maybe they will just move on to the next struggling little town they can take advantage of. I would think you would want to be a town board that protects their community at all costs. I would think it would be an easier road to face a possible lawsuit from Calpine and have the town's support than to face a magnitude of lawsuits from the residents of this community for which this town may never recover. So the question is, what are you, the town board, that put us where we are today now going to do to protect us? Are you going to continue down the path with Calpine? Are you going to sit back and let the clock tick away so you don't make the decision leaving <coughs> the state of New York? Are you going to continue to listen to the misrepresentations presented by the Calpine representatives, such as you heard at the last meeting and again tonight at this meeting? Or are you going to adapt the revised one law proposed by the town planning board as it is proposed in its entirety, making it law? I guess it really comes down to who do you really trust? About 30 seconds, man. Who do you truly believe wants to protect our residents and environment? Who do you truly believe has the best interest of our community at heart? Mr. Mott and his fellow town planning board members who live, work, and spend on countless unpaid hours of service within our community? Or Cal Pine, whose only reason for being here is to make money off this community's future <coughs> economic loss and destruction? It seems a no-brainer. You should know by now what this community wants, deserves, and demands from your, you as a town board. Please pass this law as it is presented. No changes. One more. Go ahead. <laughs> it's a long walk. I understand. <laughs> we talked. Words in thousands. Thanksgiving's coming up. <coughs> Christmas is not be beyond, far behind. And there's a lot less difference, distance between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Who wants all this hanging over our heads? I certainly do not. Speed it up a little bit. We're getting old. <laughs> and I have to tell you. Getting here tonight is a story you wouldn't believe. So please, please, get to the bottom of it. You, you heard that gentleman from promoting uh, Calpine Bluestone. Don't he understand? They can compromise all they want. We don't need it. We don't want it because it's damaging everything that we hold dear. So please, Mr. Decker, please, speed it up. <laughs> Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving.
tougher every day. <laughs> Is there anybody else to say? <laughs> I'll make this quick. Uh, first off, I respect everybody up there. This is quite a debacle here. There's a lot of moving parts. And when considering all the moving parts, it's to my knowledge that these proposed structures have never before been seen on land. So most of these numbers that we spew out are theories or hypothetical. I mean, how many people up here on the board are you know, experts in environmental health and science? economics, um, engineering, we heard from a man tonight. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but can just anybody pour a concrete foundation, you call just anybody to do that? Who do we have on the board that can represent, who doesn't have a vested interest in this project that can analyze and interpret all this data for the economic, the health and safety impact, the environmental impact, who, who, do we have, who do you guys answer to, to make these informed decisions, to evaluate, to, to give us the best representation? Who's behind you? We give you guys you know, our concerns. We, we're all pretty witty, we're great at research and everything, but I, I don't know a lot of us in here that have put up wind turbines, know all the different variables that come with this. So it's great that we did the moratorium. You know, I really appreciate all that, but who is accredited behind you? Who has credentials that are interpreting all this data and making these informed decisions? Is there anybody on the board behind you guys? I know you're doing a hell of a job researching, cross-referencing data, talking to people and everything, but I mean, are there people appointed that, is there anybody? It's just us. And is this it? Are we taking our orders from Albany? confused here as to these structures have never before been seen on land and we're talking about how many birds they'll kill or the infrasound and everything else who is considering all this data and interpreting all that it can't just be everybody up here there's people up here with vested interests am i wrong i'd like some answers on that if anybody has some is there a list of people that no answers okay well Thank you for the additional three months. It's obviously needed with all the moving parts and everything involved in this. Thank you. Thanks. He's yawning. So <laughs> Anybody else this evening? Okay, seeing nobody, we'll uh, close public comment tonight. We'll thank you all for taking part as you always do. We always appreciate your comments and feedback. Thank you very much.